Good morning and good afternoon and a warm welcome to Hexagon's Nexus launch event. Thank you for joining us and we're excited to have you here. In the next hour, you will hear from our Hexagon experts and industry leaders on how Hexagon can help shape the future of manufacturing. Without further ado, please welcome our Chief Product and Technology Officer, Parth Joshi, who will talk about how Hexagon is empowering makers with freedom to innovate. Thank you, Beth. On behalf of Hexagon, I would like to welcome you all to this launch event. It is truly a super exciting day for us as we'll be launching a game-changing new platform. Let me start by introducing who we are for anyone joining us for the first time. Hexagon is a global technology leader in digital reality solutions, committed to a simple yet powerful principle, putting data to work to empower an autonomous and sustainable future. Our technologies drive innovations across numerous industries. We work with customers ranging from small job shops to the largest OEMs globally. Every year, we support the development and manufacturing of 95% of cars, 90% of aircrafts, 75% of smartphones, along with supporting many other industries. We're engaged with manufacturers daily, and we work hard to understand your challenges and goals to come up with better solutions together. The Manufacturing Intelligence Division within Hexagon is focused on helping discrete manufacturers digital transformations. Our comprehensive portfolio helps in three core areas that are critical to manufacturers. First, design and engineering solutions, which improve efficiency in product design and prototyping, embed quality into design, and ensure manufacturability downstream. Secondly, production solutions that ensure the design intent is maintained throughout the product lifecycle, improving productivity and delivering high quality components. Thirdly, metrology and inspection solutions that capture real world data for inspection and quality to continuously improve efficiency, productivity, and quality for our customers. Not only do we work closely with customers, but we also manufacture products ourselves. So we have a deep understanding of the different industry trends and challenges. Four examples that we see are, firstly, increasing productivity. Companies are automating at every opportunity, but often struggle to utilize the available data to its fullest extent. Overall productivity in manufacturing can increase by 30 plus percent by adopting digitalization initiatives, meaning improving the connectivity of digital data, bringing products to market faster with confidence that the quality designed is the quality delivered. Second, managing costs to drive profitability. As the cost of raw material and labor keeps rising year over year, Companies need to ensure that their end-to-end -end processes are connected and optimized while being agile and having established closed-loop workflows across different teams to enable the seamless exchange of data. Thirdly, sustainability is in sharper focus than ever before. Beyond the environmental impact, businesses today need to think about economic sustainability and opportunities resource production and consumption, social responsibility, and a wealth of other factors. Lastly, breaking down silos. Manufacturing ecosystems are comprised of many facilities, including OEMs and suppliers, with teams working remotely to play their role in the development of a product from concept to reality. Internal and external silos can impede progress. So breaking down silos is a key in digitalization. Your productivity, cost, and quality-driven outcomes can be impacted by various silos, both internally and externally, reducing the collaboration and interaction across departments, increasing the chances of costly change management. Teams feel less empowered due to limited accessibility of information throughout the innovation lifecycle based on different tools, databases, processes, and information. At Hexagon, we believe that data is a common digital thread across organizations and technology 
that can bring all functions and stakeholders closer together. Making the data available to the right user at the right time can make the whole process faster, more agile, and responsive, addressing key challenges. So, how do we help makers break down these silos and unlock the true value of data across your companies and the industry? Hexagon is pleased to announce the launch of an open digital reality platform called Nexus. Let's now see Nexus in action through a short video explaining what it is, how it will help you, and how it will disrupt the industry. The world of manufacturing is changing. With increasing demand for innovation and growing focus on sustainability, you need future-ready technologies built to help you transform without disruption. Meet Nexus. Nexus is an open digital reality platform for manufacturers, which connects people, technologies, and data to accelerate innovation and bring ideas to life faster than ever before. Nexus brings together technologies from Hexagon and its partner ecosystem to create innovative new solutions for you by enabling secure connectivity and data sharing between teams. Connect the products you know and love via Nexus and build integrated workflows with fluid, interoperable data to optimize processes. Access cloud-based, task-oriented native applications that make the job easier for end users. The powerful Nexus engine supports the creation of new apps and workflows from product design through production and quality inspection. Visualize data, collaborate across teams and disciplines in real time, and leverage advanced analytics and AI technologies to unlock new insights. Users get a personalized and interactive way to access all their products, apps, solutions, training, documentation, and support information through Nexus. Explore and try the rich portfolio of hardware, software, and services from Hexagon and its partners. Get support and network with experts in a single location. Hexagon is empowering makers, meeting customers where they are, starting with the technology they trust, and driving innovation at their own pace. In a world that wants better products and more sustainable processes, Nexus gives you freedom to innovate. Nexus empowers makers with the freedom to innovate. So what is Nexus? It's an open platform utilizing modern user-centered UI UX design to help you connect people, technologies, and data across the product lifecycle, while also releasing new modern applications and solutions. Nexus allows secure exchange of data across teams, disciplines, and technologies, enabling real-time collaboration and helping you innovate by turning the data into intelligence through meaningful insights. We are really excited to launch our first set of modern apps and solutions today and have an exciting roadmap of new offerings coming on a regular basis in the short and midterm. In, in addition to being a technology platform, Nexus is also an ecosystem of key technology vendors, system integrators, Hexagon, and the makers like yourselves. This ecosystem can leverage the platform capabilities to build novel solutions and help solve challenges that manufacturers are facing. In the next session, after me, we're going to deep dive into how Nexus works. With our initial release of Nexus, we are joined by industry leading technology companies that are already leveraging the open and rich capabilities of Nexus to deliver joint solutions to the market. Our partners like Microsoft, Altium, Datanomics, Octon, and CADS Additive are bringing complementary technologies to Nexus to ensure you, as a customer, have access to a deeper and broader portfolio. In the coming months, we'll be announcing even more partners and system integrators to the ecosystem, giving you more freedom. If you are interested in a partnership, 
please reach out to us. Our goal with Nexus is to give you the freedom you need to innovate at your pace and the technology of your choice. Next, Stephen Graham will introduce Nexus in more detail covering the new applications, solutions, portal, and platform itself. As we continue the presentations, you can in parallel sign up on the platform with the QR code or at nexus.hexagon.com free of charge to experience the unified and modern customer journey and try out our innovative Nexus offerings. You will love it. Thank you. Thank you, Parth. Now let's move on to our next session. Please welcome Stephen Graham, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Nexus, to share details on how Nexus can help your journey from digitalization to autonomy and introduce the first set of Nexus offerings that we are launching today. Thank you, Beth. So as Parth explained, we're launching Nexus today to tackle some of the most pervasive challenges in manufacturing. Leveraging technology to increase productivity, stimulating collaboration throughout the product lifecycle to break down silos, and leveraging data to work towards more sustainable outcomes. In the next 20 minutes, I aim to dive deeper into exactly what Nexus is, what it does, how it works, and how it can help you wherever you are in your transformation journey from digitalization towards autonomy. I'll also take some time to explain exactly what we're launching today and try to give you an idea of what's coming in the near future and in the years to come. Nexus is an open digital reality platform for manufacturing, connecting technology and people in real time using a data-centered approach. A key word there is open. Nexus isn't just a place for technologies from Hexagon. We're building an ecosystem where you will be able to find and connect technologies from any vendor. You will also be able to connect and collaborate with your suppliers and your customers and work with third-party system integrators to build solutions to the challenges you face. In addition to connecting technologies, Nexus is also designed to connect people. And a key focus is to drive real-time collaboration across engineering disciplines to break down silos in manufacturing organizations that otherwise get in the way of solving problems. As I said, this connectivity is provided in real time and in a data-centered way. But before diving into exactly how that works, I'd like to say a few words first on what we mean by digital reality. Digital reality is a data-driven concept. Similar to the idea of a digital twin operating within a digital thread, but connected much more tightly to reality. To create a digital reality, we are interested to connect real-world data sensed in real time to maintain a digital representation of products and machines and processes that is as close to reality as possible every step of the way. By maintaining a digital reality, we create the opportunity to turn data into intelligence in real time, empowering teams to make better decisions faster. As a digital reality platform, Nexus aspires to this ideal. Nexus is not trying to be a centralized, static data store. This is an important function for sure, and there are other systems for that. Instead, with Nexus, our focus is on the real time, identifying and solving problems as they occur. So what exactly is Nexus? Well, Nexus is a cloud-based digital reality platform. It has a web-based front end where you can log in to view and manage your manufacturing software and hardware and discover more technologies that may help you. From the home page, you can also participate in ongoing collaborative activities in real time. But the real power of Nexus comes from connecting applications, hardware, and other technologies that generate data in a manufacturing context. Nexus enables improved and democratized access to data that is otherwise locked in silos. 
by enabling collaborative workflows operating in real time and across engineering disciplines, Nexus helps to break down silos to improve the speed of product development and drive decision making based on insights derived from analysis of real time data. And that key point again, openness. Nexus welcomes technologies from any vendor, not just Hexagon, to support the flexibility to work with whichever technologies you prefer. Pretty much anything that generates data in the context of discrete manufacturing can be connected to Nexus. Once it's connected, we call it powered by Nexus. Both hardware and software products can be powered by Nexus, and each product only needs to be connected once. Once it's connected, it can then become a part of any number of real-time collaborative workflows built using connectivity through the platform. We call these collaborative workflows Nexus solutions. A Nexus solution can be built from any two or more products that are powered by Nexus. And I'm going to say it again, Nexus is a truly open platform. It's not only Hexagon products that will be powered by Nexus, but the platform is also open to connect software, hardware, or any other data generating manufacturing technologies from any vendor. You need the freedom to build solutions from whatever technologies you already own or choose, and Nexus provides that freedom. The Nexus digital reality platform has many capabilities, starting with the real-time connectivity used to build solutions. Once a solution is up and running, data flows through the platform, and so we've built many additional capabilities to derive further value from this data. Advanced analytics, including artificial intelligence and, ma and machine learning, are used to deliver insights and take step towards autonomy. High-powered compute accelerates simulations, and visualization technologies help to bring other users logging directly into Nexus on the web into the collaboration. Mostly these platform capabilities are used to build apps and solutions, but where relevant, they will also be offered directly to end users as Nexus platform services. Finally, we're developing a set of Nexus apps. These are new cloud and Nexus native software products that leverage the unique capabilities of the cloud and are integrated directly into the modern user experience offered by Nexus. Over the coming months and years, we'll be launching many new Nexus apps and Nexus solutions. But specifically today, we're launching five things. The Nexus digital reality platform itself, our first three apps, and our first solution. I'm going to run through these one by one and show you a glimpse of what they look like. So first, the Nexus platform, as it is accessed via the Nexus homepage. The homepage offers a new customer-focused online experience designed to be a one-stop shop for our customers. You access this by typing nexus.hexagon.com on your web browser. Signing up is simple using the registration page, and I'd like to encourage everyone watching this presentation today to register free of charge. We ask a few questions about your role and interests in order to provide a highly personalized experience. Then. From the Nexus homepage, you can discover products and technologies from Hexagon and other suppliers, get support and training for the products you currently use, purchase hardware accessories, and learn about the new Nexus apps and solutions. Once logged in, you will see a very modern user interface where you can explore what Nexus has to offer to address your manufacturing challenges and goals. Nexus presents an incredibly broad portfolio of technology including design and engineering software, production software, and complete metrology solutions. Learn about manufacturing software and hardware, all in one convenient experience. From the Nexus homepage, you will be guided to recommendations based on the products you already own or your specified areas of interest. You can also find a series of industry-specific solutions that are drawn from the vast knowledge of the global Hexagon team and our partners. If you're not sure which technologies can help with your latest issues, use the solution finder to guide you. Simply select the topics of interest and quickly see the recommendations. If you need more information on any product, 
the sales teams are just a click away. Nexus also provides many services options when you need help from dedicated experts. Our capable services team is there to support you along the way. Speak to an expert by filling out a simple form. The Nexus homepage is not just about providing product information. It will be the single place where users can access first-class technical support. Already today, users can get access to all software documentation using the Documentation Center. Users can also search and register for instructor-led training to gain key product knowledge and purchase metrology hardware accessories. The modern, secure e-commerce site makes it easy to manage your daily hardware needs. The Nexus homepage is your personalized environment where you have everything at your fingertips. From solutions to support, join us today and be part of the Nexus journey. Okay, so much for the homepage. The first Nexus app that we are announcing today is Metrology Reporting. It provides real-time metrology information and insights and enables increased productivity based on data-driven decision-making. This powerful app centralizes disparate data sources into a single intuitive dashboard. The Metrology Reporting app is simple to access and use. Log in through your browser and access metrology data wherever and whenever it's needed. It's responsive, intuitive, and easy to learn. It's also visual. Graphs, charts, and color ensure users focus on the data important to their task. Metrology reporting intelligently supports customer workflows and complex analyses and trends become easy to understand. On-the-fly filtering gives manufacturers advanced data not available from other reporting tools or simple PDFs. And it's accessible, meaning it's available to any user at any time on any device. And it's also scalable, so there's no limit to the number of users who can be logged in. With metrology reporting, you can track the real-time status of measured parts, get failure details, and view metrology reports on any device at any time. Users can access data and insights quickly and efficiently, and it's easy to consolidate disparate reporting tools into one system so users can collaborate on centralized data. You will also be able to search an archive of historical dimensional data and metrology reports. Metrology reporting integrates seamlessly with on-premise software such as PCDMIS and Quindos to view the metrology data. It simplifies collaboration. You can easily share key reporting data with colleagues. Our goal with this app is to make the user's job easier, increasing your productivity through intelligent cloud-based reporting and visualization. Metrology reporting is simple, intelligent and accessible, giving you smarter reporting and insights to drive your business. The second app we're launching today is Materials Connect. Materials data is at the core of any product innovation process. Materials Connect empowers organizations to leverage material data more effectively and drive productivity. It's a cloud-native visualization and data management solution, creating a single and central repository that is available to all material data consumers within your company. This database can easily be managed and configured to the user's preferences. The app is very easy and intuitive to use. An Excel template is available for flexible import of your material data from a wide variety of data types and formats. It contains detailed guidelines for the definition of data attributes, data properties, data parameters, and finally, data curves without extensive configuration up front. Once the Excel sheet is filled in, you can quickly import your material data into the database. The database allows you to search for material data by keyword or filter by material property and save the fil filtering configurations for future use. Thanks to the advanced search and filtering capabilities, you can quickly identify the material of your interest. You can interactively visualize imported data curves and parameters to unlock data-driven insights. By making material data more accessible, this app enhances collaboration and connectivity across functions within organizations. By democratizing materials data, it can help to drive productivity. The third app we're launching today is Materials Enrich. 
Materials Enrich works in tandem with Materials Connect to leverage and enrich existing material data to drive faster product design and development. It's also very simple to use. Existing material data are imported from Materials Connect to be augmented intelligently. The existing material data are represented in a matrix with some empty cells among the imported data. Missing combinations of materials and testing conditions can be created to be further completed. The user can choose among different enrichment technologies that combine material modeling with machine learning. The enrichment allows users to save time and cost relative to physical testing. The material data are generated fast and with high accuracy according to a fidelity indicator. The database is augmented with reliable predictions that can be published in Materials Connect to make the enriched data further accessible by any other connected application and drive faster product design and development with a rapid availability of material information. Both these material applications, Connect and Enrich, work together to provide end-to-end -end capabilities from material data management to material enrichment. Finally, I would like to show you our first Nexus solution, an example of a connected workflow built using Nexus, fostering collaboration, breaking down silos, and putting data to work. As you can see here, Nexus has a vast portfolio of technologies supporting an additive manufacturing workflow, from product design to process development, all the way to quality inspection. Designing for AM and leveraging the huge potential of additive manufacturing requires a holistic approach throughout its entire process chain. Our initial focus is on the engineering phase of the workflow. More specifically, the product design and associated manufacturing process development stages. Through Nexus, we're connecting standalone applications within the design and engineering sequence and thus enabling real-time collaborative work between the re respective stakeholders of the engineering workflow. Now let's see the connected workflow in action. The real-time collaborative work is initiated by the product designer signing into Nexus from the desktop application Apex GD. Hexagon's generative design solution. The product designer starts by selecting a material that will be used by all connected applications all along the workflow, thus ensuring data consistency throughout the project. The product engineer will then work in the connected desktop application to generate an optimized product geometry. The optimized geometry is synchronized with Nexus, ready to be used by other connected applications. The product designer then invites other relevant stakeholders to join and work collaboratively on the project. The process engineer, who's been invited by the product designer to join the collaborative Nexus project, will log into Nexus from the connected third-party build prep solution, AM Studio, from CADS Additive. Note that this is not a hexagon product. As I've been saying, Nexus is a truly open platform. By connecting AM Studio, all relevant data present in the shared Nexus project is available to the application, here material and part geometry. The process engineer can now prepare the part for print, but critically, he or she can work in real time with the product designer, modifying the design if necessary to improve manufacturability. These information and geometries are in turn synchronized with Nexus to be used for the next steps of the AM workflow. Once the build has been set up, the simulation engineer, who was also invited to the project, can start running simulations to check the manufacturability of the part with Simifact Additive, our AM process simulation solution. Again, the simulation engineer can work collaboratively in real time with the product designer and process engineer to tweak the design or build prep as needed to ensure manufacturability. By working together in this way, the three engineers can find a solution much more quickly than if they each worked independently in sequence. Again, after logging into Nexus and connecting to the project, all relevant data is automatically available to Simifact Additive to facilitate the simulation preparation work and ensure data consistency all along the workflow. Once the process build has been validated by process simulation and the part design and manufacturability collaboratively validated, AM Studio will be used again to prepare the job for printing. Nesting and hatching strategies will be defined, 
the slicing of the printing job will be performed, all necessary print files to be sent to the 3D printer will be generated, thus completing the DFAM workflow. Beyond enabling real-time collaborative work along the workflow during the engineering phase, Nexus also offers a three-dimensional whiteboard that will allow stakeholders of the project to perform live, interactive, collaborative project reviews. The three engineers and anyone else who needs to participate in the project can access the collaborative 3D whiteboard from one of the connected applications or directly from a web browser by logging into the Nexus homepage. The platform provides 3D renderings of the project geometries, dynamic displays of results generated by the different connected applications, and it allows annotations and freehand sketching capabilities for live, interactive project reviews. Finally, users can set up notifications and manage project review agenda and history. So those were the specific offerings we're launching today. The Nexus digital reality platform itself, three Nexus apps, Metrology Reporting, Materials Connect, and Materials Enrich, and our first Nexus solution focused on design for additive manufacturing, illustrating the potential of Nexus solutions. These offerings are of course only the beginning. We will be announcing many more apps and solutions throughout this year and in the future. As it develops, Nexus will present an unparalleled portfolio of software and hardware for manufacturing, not only from Hexagon, but from a growing list of other vendors too. Nexus solutions are built by connecting these products into real-time interactive workflows. Nexus enables interoperability across disciplines and across traditional organization, organizational silos to break down barriers. And this is achieved by sharing only the minimum data needed to solve a particular problem. So with Nexus, you can start small and approach digital transformation incrementally rather than needing to change everything at once. Nexus leverages the technologies you all are already using to start your digitalization journey. As data is shared collaboratively, previously siloed teams will work together to deliver new insights. In time, these insights can be further enhanced with advanced analytics technologies to support better decision-making, taking steps towards increasingly autonomous processes to free up engineering talent to focus on higher value adding tech activities. So that is Nexus. Register now, free of charge, at nexus.hexagon.com and explore the platform where you can already try out some of the new offerings like Metrology Reporting and Materials Connect. Reach out to your Hexagon account manager to find out more about how Nexus can help you and look out for more new apps solutions and other offerings coming on Nexus throughout this year and in the future. Thank you very much for watching so far and stay tuned for our panel discussion coming up now involving some key thought leaders in manufacturing. Thank you, Stephen. Let's move on to our last session of the event. I would like to welcome our panelists to share their perspective on challenges and trends in the manufacturing sector and how companies are looking to transform with new ways of working. Hello, my name is Stephen Chadwick. I'm the president of EMEA at Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence and previously had 15 years in the Royal Navy as a electronic engineering uh, leader. I'm joined today by Stan Prebolinski, who's vice president of SimData a management consulting and research firm focused exclusively on PLM and digital transformation. I'm also joined by Ron Bennett, VP Global IT at Linamar Corporation, an advanced manufacturing company creating motion solutions such as powertrains for electric vehicles, for combine harvesters and even medical devices. And finally, I'm joined by Christopher Berlin, who's partner architect at Microsoft a company I don't think I need to introduce any further. What is perhaps important is to point out that Christoph's focus is manufacturing and specifically the role of cloud. So to begin, I'd first of all like to turn to a customer. So Ron, if you don't mind, I'd like to put the first question to you. Linamar is a global manufacturer. 
You have 65 manufacturing sites and 13 R&D centres spread across the whole world. What challenges today are you as a manufacturer grappling with in the current market? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, when you look at the market today, there is a huge shifting in customer expectations. And it's really around you know, how we work to meet their needs in our traditional product portfolio while shifting to create new products for the battery electric vehicle market. And when you look at the pace of change around the battery electric vehicle drive lines, um, that coupled with the new design considerations that are drastically different than the old drive lines, it's a very steep learning curve for us. But you know we've done a great job coming to market quickly with our products and based on our systems and the growth and the electrification uh, outpacing our traditional business. You know we see that continuing uh, in the future. But in the end, we need to be faster. We need to be more efficient and more accurate, more agile than ever before. And that really means working more closely with our supply base on material changes, purchase component design, collaboration on all design elements, whether it's a FEA analysis, could be mold flow analysis, maybe a bearing design for NVH, or working with customers on overall system packaging and system NVH. So in the end, you know, one of the things we grapple with is well, how do we best utilize new technology to make us better in all those things I just mentioned above. No, fa fantastic. It's great to be talking to somebody who's so deep into the uh, business challenges and the engineering aspects of it. Uh, thank you. How do those uh, challenges today, those business outcomes that you're looking for, translate into the IT environment? Well, coming from uh, the engineering and quality background and now running IT for a large corporation, one thing I've noticed is we definitely have um, very siloed systems. So historically, we've deployed systems uh, in segmented or compartmentalized processes that just didn't talk to each other very well. Now, some of that's of our own doing. Some of that was induced by what was available on the market today um, or back then. Um, but really, there is a, a paradigm shift happening in the market around manufacturing. And it's really, you know, how, how can we harness what we've already invested in? Because we have made large investments into our infrastructure. And while at the same time, continue to transition to new technology that will make us more efficient, that will make us faster to market. So for us, the answer has been, you know, harnessing a hybrid approach, use what we have for our traditional products, and then start looking for technology changes and different ways of using what's available on the market today and for future development. Um, you, when you look at what we have today from a systems component, we, we do use a lot of hexagon technologies already. We use MSC NASTRAM, Mark, Adams, uh, Romax for the design side of the business. We use PC Demos for metrology. And then we use QDAS for measuring our production or manufacturing data. Of course, we need all of these system softwares and hardware uh, to talk together because we do have multiple data sources and systems that connect. So in the end, our goal from an IT perspective is create a closed loop system that brings our engineering design testing validation processes in line with manufacturing process that's in line with our quality and then wrapping that together with our infield data around warranty and reliability and generating that uh, total closed loop system. No, thank you. I, what I'm hearing um, is it's about the right information being available at the right time to the right person around the empowerment and the freedom of the end users to be able to do their job in the best possible way with the right data. Is that, is that being now explored and exploited through the IT organization at Linamar? Yeah, it's, it's really being explored deeply in IT, but even more across the entire organization. So for us, it's all about empowering our people. I mean, everyone that works at Linamar has a, has a defined skill set. They have a lot of knowledge and, and they have a set of tools that they're using. So for, for a leadership group like myself, it's finding ways so that they can use those tools more efficiently. Um, when we look at it, we're looking at the entire digital ecosystem. The engineering tools are one piece, 
but there's also all the collaboration tools that they use every day in their in their work, right? So the Microsoft Teams, the PowerPoints, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the calls that we're on every day. My role really isn't what to tell them what to do. It's to find them a better way of how to do it. You know, how to help them collaborate more effectively with their colleagues, whether they're in Canada, whether they're in Germany, or maybe they're in Asia. It's really about making a more efficient design process and, and that lets us be more innovative. You know, technology creates efficiencies in work, but it also has the potential to create more data and better data. Now, Linamar is a very data-driven company. We're lean, continuous improvement mindset. And with that now is how do we best harness the data by making simple processes that eliminate waste and then ultimately drive more value creation. That for me is really incredible. And, and when you bring all these data sets together, the, the net gain for the corporation is knowledge is pretty incredible. I mean, what I'm talking about is how do we get to that digital twin to help us to be faster to market, exceed our customers' expectations, increase organizational memory through improving access to information and knowledge. So we're looking at it as a holistic approach to technology from an IT perspective, whether it's engineering or just general business use. No, thank you, Ron. I'd like to move to Stan. So we've looked at the, uh, an individual enterprise perspective, but from a wider market perspective, um, Stan, do you think that um, engineering and manufacturing leaders today uh, engaging in the value creation chain um, can deliver this sort of change of freedom and empowerment with the tool sets they have available in the wider market? Yeah, so in the beginning of your comments, you mentioned the fact that Sim Data focuses on product lifecycle management and digital transformation. And PLM as a concept has been around since around 2000. And it's always been about um, uh, supporting the life cycle from idea through life. Um, but in our research work and in our consulting work with industrial organizations, most people are still sort of stuck in what used to be known as PDM, product data management. They're still trying to get a handle on managing the IP that they have and then the processes around that with a particular focus on the transition from engineering to manufacturing. So the E-bomb, as people refer to it, to the M-bomb. Um, so I think they can, but the actual instances of that happening have been spotty. I think COVID highlighted the need to do that and to be better supported by the, the tools that you have in-house. Um, but I think there's still a fair amount of work to do. No, interesting. It's the heterogeneous nature of the, of the digital threat. And are companies today in the wider market being able to think about how the supply chain disruption and the uh, supply chain decision making further down the line is affecting them? Is that, is that being taken into account, do you think, by the engineering leaders? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. But think about what you're saying as well, right? Because you're referring to the engineering leaders and engineering is only part of the life cycle process. So inherently, we still have, in many cases, those silos that really need to be broken down and you need to be able to support collaboration across different parts of the organization. And that's the way I see uh, digital twins enabled by a digital thread, that it's really to give people vivid uh a vivid realization of what their decisions have resulted in, either in engineering or down uh, getting IoT data back from the floor from some machine that you sold to a customer. When we think about a more, um, a more open platform like Nexus, being able to enhance what is already there, do you see this approach that larger manufacturers would adopt? Um, I think so. I mean, Hexagon has a lot of valuable intellectual property to bring to bear to the product lifecycle. And Nexus is a collaborative solution that helps do that. So I think uh, it will be valuable for many of their customers to be able to support um, that heterogeneous environment. You know, what I, what I often say with the Influence Industry 4.0 is everybody's going to, everybody and everything is going to be on somebody else's digital thread. Right. So we're going to need a way to capture that information and represent that information so that it can be more effectively communicated across the, the value chain. And, and that's one of the things that Nexus will help to do. Uh, thank you. So picking up on the point of the connection of the digital thread, but thinking more of how the office environment works today and move to Christoph. Um, 
How is technology helping people work differently in all environments? It is always a very, a very intelligent question with regards to really figuring out how all, those, all these things really work together. If you look into the environment in offices or in, in engineering companies today, is there's a lot of change going on. There's a lot of change because our environments change, our requirements change. And so at the end of the day, it is really about how do I adapt to pretty much the new work styles that we actually have around us. For example, three years ago when the pandemic hit, um, we were all going to the office. And uh, in the office, we had our uh, computer stations. Uh, we, we pretty much collaborated within the office environment. And suddenly we weren't able to go to the office. So we started new ways to collaborating together. Um, teams came in. And so at the end of the day, what new ways of working really means and what's new is that you want to meet uh, pretty much wherever the, the customer or the, uh, the collaborative person or uh, pretty much your team is. Uh, it's not about technology per se any longer. It is much more about just pretty much just having information available, um, whether it is on the phone, whether it is on a laptop, whether it is on a web interface. Um, technology shouldn't really dictate how you collaborate together. It should be the other way around. And that is why aspects such as easy ways to collaborate, uh, SaaS experiences, SaaS apps, but also uh, integrations into existing, uh, sometimes on-premise systems is really vital in order to really bring the information together, not the systems. No, understand. Uh, thank you, Christoph. Um, we know that engineers and manufacturers work inside discrete systems that, that help them do their job. How can we help them adapt and adopt to these new practices of freedom of information, this information flow that is now prevalent in a more SaaS-based, cloud-based environment? Yeah. yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, it is all about pretty much meeting where the information really is. So if you look into experiences today, um, you have a very heterogeneous environment. You have systems quite quite honestly, all over the place. Um, you have on-premise systems, you have the data in the cloud, you have experiences on mobile phones as well as on laptops and all these things. So at the, at the very end, it is all about just providing access to the information in what is the easiest and most efficient way possible. And as I mentioned before, it is really about the aspect of uh, bringing pretty much these the vision together, but also bringing the systems along. So you now naturally you cannot change systems that rapidly. Um, there's always this push for cloudification or transformation in the cloud. And while there's a lot of benefit to it, let's be let's be honest to ourselves and let's be fair that adopting pretty much these new technology will take some time. There's not only a technology investment but there's also an ROI that has to come in over time and so at the very end it is really about the, how do you make heterogeneous systems work in the most modern experience possible and this is actually a concept that is not fundamentally new um, so for example it will even in Microsoft there is this change going on so let me be very transparent and very honest with you is like in Microsoft a lot of the developers use Macs um, uh, because it is their preferred developer platform. Um, so does it mean that we pretty much we abandon other systems for Macs? No, not at all. It is really about how do you really bring efficiency and how do you really bring um, pretty much the productivity together in order to really support people with the work that they do. Technology must support. In an what is fundamentally important to to the towards these aspects is what I mentioned before. It is about the heterogeneous environment. It's there is never ever a single system that works for everything. It is much more about thinking about layers, thinking about composable architectures or even products that really work together. So, for example, um, if you have a Microsoft suite of uh, for office productivity. It has a core competency and it does these things extremely well. Is it the actual interface for developers? No, it's not, that's not it because for that you have other products. But how you integrate these is fundamentally important because you should be able to pretty much use the Office suite as well as uh, developer tools um, in a single experience, not single platform, 
um, to really enhance the productivity and really bring these aspects together. And this is also something as you actually look at uh, Nexus, that it's all about meeting where their customer is and meeting where the data is. So at the very end, it is about how do you really merge experiences rather than platforms? And that makes it very, very powerful for fast moving in innovation, but at the same time, really being a little bit realistic about how technology has to change underneath. Now, very interesting. So when we think about meeting users where they are, providing an open experience for them based on the tools that they use, thinking about how you enable that in a engineering IP heavy environment, um, what, are the, what are the challenges that companies will face in terms of operating in that world? So is, as you actually move into the cloud, um, there is a perceived boundary with regards to change. Um, it is about IP living somewhere else than the own server. Um, it is about um, not having full control on, over the underlying network architecture or system architecture. Um, but quite honestly, those are more often used as an excuse than uh, pretty much driving forward change. Here's the fact, you use cloud every day today um, because what is cloud? Cloud is all about collaboration. It is all about bringing these systems together is you use email today, you use Teams, you use any other video conferencing system, you share files, you wanna have um, collaboration happening everywhere. So yes, while there is the aspect of, you have to think about IP protection, system protection, all these things in the cloud. Um, I also encourage, uh, especially uh, customers to look into the benefits um, to pretty much say, how can we merge these systems together? How do we really bring forward um, collaboration and then see what uh, what is the right level of protection with, uh, with regards to these things? Uh, there are system requirements that you want to consider, such as tenancy. So where does the data really live? Um, there are aspects such as uh, uh, modern authentication systems, because at the end of the day, you, you need to protect your data. But at the end of the day, don't let the discussion of on-premise versus cloud really drive the overall um, decision making, but rather it is like, what do I need for this efficient collaboration aspect that the future needs, um, that, your, that the customers of customers expect, and uh, how to actually boost productivity for the workers that are all working to, uh, towards the solution. No, thank you. Uh, so, Ron, putting the same question uh, back to you from an um, from a enterprise perspective, how, mm -hmm. how, how would you see this, this open architecture world? Is, is what Christoph says applicable? Is being able to join these threads together, these digital threads, and being able to open that up? Do you see that as a challenge or do you see that as an enabler? Well, I think it's an absolute enabler. I think it's, it's managing the risks that come with that, right? So when you think about the inhibitors that would stop us from using a system or a platform or a technology that would make us more efficient, um, you know, you, you got to make sure that the, the communication is clear and, and what the end game or the end goal is and why you're making the change. So for us, it, it comes down to starting to set a vision, right? So make sure everyone understands what that end goal is when we when we move technology, because in the end, technology doesn't make engineers any less valuable or replace them, right? It, it actually has the potential to move them to more value added work, to make the work they're doing uh, more creative. So, you know, you just got to know that uh, from an engineering perspective, the end user being an engineer, they love to play with models in software. They love to make changes. They love to work on the actual uh, design that they're that they're trying to put out into a production environment. But that may change using a platform uh, like like Nexus or a tool like Nexus. If you think about a follow the sun model, right? Um, one is really managing the messaging, make sure that you want, they understand that it's it's all about value creation and they'll be more, more efficient in what they're doing. And that helps us get to the end goal of being faster to market and meeting our customers' expectations. From, a, from an IP perspective, 
you know, I, I don't think we worry about it. We operate in the cloud today at some levels. Um, and when you think about the way Linamar is developed, our IP is all about the process we use to develop and create products, not simply the products themselves. So the faster we can do that, the less we have to worry about IP in the cloud. No, thank you. Back, back to you, Christoph. In terms of these multiple systems that are used today, these multiple applications, connecting those data threads together. What, what's the technology that underlies how the data is enabled to flow? So the way to think about it is that with having all of these different systems work together, you want to have something that we often refer to as smart data contracts. So smart data contracts is all about how do we actually create a dependency and a tracking of one system to another. So let's actually take, um, let's say, Office. Office, I'm pretty sure every of these of our users uh, and viewers here is hopefully familiar because it is very pervasive in the industry, is it is not a single product. It is not a single application. Office is all about um, multiple applications behind it, Office, Outlook, uh, Excel, uh, and all these things, Teams, uh, working together. So when they work together, you want to have an experience that really brings those together because at the very end, it, it is about the efficiency of all of these different building blocks really uh, working well. So the way, and as I mentioned at the beginning, is, is, is really about defining how do you actually work together? How do you uh, really create a contract between these applications um, that, that pretty much boost your overall productivity? So as you actually think about suites in general, um, application suites, and particular uh, nexus and all and all of these aspects it's it's all is always about it's never actually about a single platform it's never about a single application that tries to do it all um efforts in the past have really kind of uh, failed to say that there's one platform to rule them all it is all about the best of breed solutions for a, a particular task but having them work together, not only from a security point of view, not only from a IP protection point of view, but simply from a overall collaboration point of view. It's really about the aspect of how do I bring the, uh, how do I bring, or how do I deliver the, the data that the user needs um, in the most efficient form, but at the same time, how do I pretty much build underneath a contract level that really says, and it's like certain applications go here, I would go there. Um, and it's really about how do I protect the information as it flows from one system to another. And so as you as you mentioned yourself, it is it, it is all about the um, it is all about the the concept of contracts that really work with each other. And at this point, and also to Ron's point earlier, it's it's not about where the information lives. It's not about um, um, the ask, is it on premise? Is it in the cloud? Is it in Europe? Is it in, uh, uh, is it in the US? Those are different questions. They're very important questions. Uh, it's for example, the, the question of data sovereignty um, and all these things. But from a collaboration point of view, it is really about just the, having the information accessible wherever you are and also bringing them into the best form and shape possible for the consumption. Is it, is it a quick approval on a mobile phone? Is it a working with models? Is it working around the, the, the sun uh, with regards to sign-offs so that you actually have, have certain tasks follow through? Those are the aspects of multiple systems and applications working together. And therefore, um, I would highly recommend um, to always think about these uh, smart data contracts. And again, this is also the, the excitement why we are here because Nexus is really enabling those. Um, clearly, it's early days for Nexus. We're right at the very beginning, uh, launching today for the first time with a selected number of apps and solutions available. We're going to be increasing uh, the number of applications and solutions over time. Almost, almost every month, there'll be new releases into this uh, new environment. But thinking about what, what we've got and what the, this discussion has uh, revolved around in terms of creating that user experience, engaging with how we uh, utilize those data threads and allow users to interact and create that uh, opportunity to collaborate inside the environment. 
what you've seen and what you've heard about Nexus uh, and where we are right now. What do you think, uh, Stan, about the, uh, the current launch and the current release? No, I think it's a great, it's a great start. I think that, um, like I said, you guys have a lot of product uh, that can provide a lot of value and people need a, a better way to collaborate around that product. Many of the, many of the solutions historically have been single user where, you know, somebody does some work and then they post that work somewhere. People may or may not look at it. Um, there's a phrase that's been used or a word that's been used in simulation for quite some time talking about the democratization of simulation, right? To bring simulation capabilities from the PhD to the engineer. And to a certain extent, that's what Nexus is doing in a vast range of technologies that you're going to bring to bear uh, using the Nexus platform. Thank you. Same question uh, to you, Rob. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a really neat user experience. You know, when you think about an engineer going into a, a, a Nexus type platform or, or system, you know, you're kind of like a kid in a candy store. You suddenly have access to uh, things you've never or maybe hadn't had access to before. Um, you know, I think it bodes well uh, that type of user experience for companies like Linamar with a very entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, definitely, you know, it, it helps us with a follow the sun model because, I mean, I think as, as Christoph and, and Steve said, we don't have to shunt these huge models around anymore. It's a centralized location and it's simply managing the access to it and that user experience. And so really, I think that has the uh, the ability to bring the digital twin together and generate outputs that are really um, primed to Linamar and that's continuous improvements to everything we do and so from my perspective I think it's a it's a pretty incredible uh, uh, way of looking at the future. No thank you and finally to you Christoph you've been on this journey with us for a long time um, Microsoft and Hexagon in this partnership but uh, what are your projections as we see going forward? How do we, how do we enhance this, and have we got this right? <laughs> you have this right already. So uh, improvements are always good, uh, but at the end of the day, or actually at the beginning of the day, it is really about the aspect of that you that Nexus is on the right journey or is providing the right journey for a new way of collaborating together. Um, so. Microsoft has gone through this for quite some time now. If you look at the Office Suite, uh, Teams, um, even developer tools, uh, uh, developer tooling, it is it is all about the efficiency. It is all about the collaboration. It is it, it should never be about the technology or platform underneath. The platform underneath is all about just being there and being supportive of it. And so, if you ask me today um, about Nexus and is it the is it the right start for the right journey? Absolutely, because it is all about uh, meeting the customer. It is all about uh, the collaboration and really figuring out how to work better together, especially in the world where we often don't sit in the same office any longer. And that is what makes it very exciting. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, to Stan, to Ron and to Christoph for your thoughts and, and sharing your view on the launch of Nexus today. Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here today to learn about our Nexus platform. I would also like to thank all of our presenters and panelists. You can learn more details by signing up for Nexus at nexus.hexagon.com. Thanks again for tuning in.